On May 11, 2021, Salesforce services went down for five hours. And uh, the cause of this outage was, as always, DNS. We've seen this many, many times, how DNS essentially affects your entire infrastructure and can cripple you down. But the question you might have is, Hussein, if DNS goes down and you bring it back up, does it really take five hours to for the services to pick app back up again? That's the question I try to answer in this video. So in this video, I'm going to go through the executive summary that uh, the Salesforce team have provided, how did what exactly services went down, and the cause, obviously the DNS, and then I'm going to give my opinion about why does it take so long when DNS goes down? How about we jump into it? All right, guys, how about we read the executive summary of why and what happened with Salesforce back on May 11th, 2021, and uh, then we're going to discuss exactly how the DNS essentially affect your services. Right? All right, on May 11th, 2021, at approximately... Nine o'clock the evening, Universal Coordinated Time UTC, the Salesforce technology team became aware of service disruption across Salesforce production instances. The disruption impacted the ability for users to log into their Salesforce environment within the core Salesforce services, marketing cloud, commerce cloud, government cloud, experience cloud, Heroku, Pardot, I don't know what Pardot is, uh, velocity. In addition, the status to salesforce.com trust site was also unavailable. We've seen this many, many times, guys. Every time there's an outage, the means to inform the customers about an outage is out, is in outage too. So for customers have no idea that what would really happen. They just seen an outage and you can't really, as, as, as a company, you can't even inform them because the status website relies on a piece of infrastructure that goes down with the outage. We've seen this many, many times. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, now Salesforce, every time. So that's why now I think people realize and companies realize that they need to separate the status infrastructure from the actual core infrastructure. This is very, very important, right? Because you need to let your users know. I mean, the easiest way is to go off of threat everybody. I don't know how that feels, really. If I'm Microsoft and I tell people about an outage in Twitter, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's like it's like everybody goes to Twitter when things goes um, the outage. And that, that might be okay, but I don't know how I feel about that. Let me know what you think, guys. Trust site was also unavailable and customers were unable to log support cases. So even they want to log support cases, they couldn't. Some customers may have also experienced issues with multi-factor authentication during the incident. As, uh, as we became aware of the disruptions and investigation began across the Salesforce technology organizers and resolve the disruption, the technology team confirmed the impact of the production host which was impairing diagnostics and analytics, a team was high confidence that the issue was triggered by an internal emergency domain name system change. So the Salesforce team made a change to the DNS, right? That's what we know that triggered the outage, but how? Let's read through the technical details a little bit. I just need to know what exactly that, and then we can talk about it. We can we can kind of puzzle things together. Technical details: the Salesforce change, the Salesforce change to the DNS impacted multiple data centers, affecting the Salesforce service for customers, the status for Salesforce.com and Salesforce Authenticator. I think this is the app that uh, do, does the multi-factor authentication. Over the following hours, the team worked to restore the service, blah, blah, blah. We're going through that. All this jazz took took five hours to do. Exactly, I'm, I'm interested more, a little bit. When we do an update to a DNS service, like you fixed a bug or you improve, introduce a feature in the DNS, right? What really happened? Let's read more. Root, root cause analysis. 
The preliminary post-incident analysis by the Salesforce technology team determined that a DNS update triggered DNS services to stop and not restart immediately. There you go. Because when you do an update, like I mean, update, I'm going to restart the service immediately, but it, it stopped but did not restart immediately. That means it was only out for few a moment. I don't know how long, they didn't mention. But that moment caused all this cascading effect. So let's speculate like we always do in this channel. And let's go back and... Because I, I think we're right enough. So let's go back. To All right, guys. So obviously, kudos. We start always with kudos to all the engineers that work in Salesforce and uh, work very hard to bring the service back up and running. I always say that because I don't want to be in their shoes because I was once upon a time, a few, few years back. And that's not fun, right? Getting cold, midnight, things go wrong. You stay over hours just to fix the outage not fun so kudos good job guys now let's analyze why dns going out for a few like that's what we that's what we read we read it's like it's only a few moments right it didn't restart immediately that's what i can deduce from that statement right so we made an update to the service obviously to update an update you stop the service to take effect Right? Unless you're using Elixir or uh, Erlang. So you can do hot swapping in the code. That's what WhatsApp does. Right? So they can change process while it's running. That's just fantastic, man. Right? But uh, the rest of us have to stop the process and restart it or do a rolling restart to pick up the change. That's what we do all the time, right? But... When we restart the service and it didn't restart immediately, what will happen? I mean, yeah, DNS goes down for a few moments. Like, what happens? Well, in a microservices architecture, or you don't have to call it microservices architecture, just a service-oriented architecture where services are relying on each other to talk and you have a load balancing in place that tag these services with uh, health checks, right? If you try... If a service tries to communicate to another service and it couldn't, right? In this particular case, because of a DNS not available, you, you query the DNS is not available, and it says as a result, the service will think that, hey, the other service is actually down. So I'm gonna try again. And then again, obviously, I can't find an IP address because maybe there's a service discovery that is not telling me what this IP address is. And then you try again and you try again. And that, at the end of the day, the service will say that, hey, by the way, that, that service is just down. And the load balancers, as a result, will have the same effect. If you make a request to a load balancer and load balancer tries to communicate to the backend service, it will try multiple times. If it's down, if it couldn't communicate, no matter what, what error it gets, which we talked about another video where load balancers and proxies are nefarious for throwing this generic error that's called bad gateway i talked about it right here if you want to learn more about it but bad gateway means anything can go wrong it's from dns from tls handshake couldn't be established from a bad certificate on the back end from a service taking too long to respond from a service actually giving you an invalid response like you're connecting connecting to the back end but giving you a a malformed re response all of this is bad gateway and as a result bad gateway errors result into the back end being marked as unhealthy so future requests will never go to that so you will try another service the load balancer will try another service, and obviously it's going to be down because the dns is down well the load balancer is not smart enough i guess in this particular case to know that oh it's just the dns it's not really the back end you cannot possibly figure that out right and 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 the proxy proxies and the services are not smart enough to to look behind it obviously right because if you if you can't look up dns all bets are off right so obviously for that period of time let's say one minute took one minute or two minutes 
all of these services are starting to just go down. I don't buy any, when I mean go down, they are marked as down, marked as bad. So services won't get any requests. And as a result, authentication will fail. Everything will fail. And even if your DNS is back up and running, hmm, it won't help you. Because guess what? The load balancer will receive a request. Yeah, it will, it will start connecting to one service, right? Again, oh, because all of them are bad. So maybe the auto scaling will kick in and say, we'll spin up a new services. And those, right, will pick up the new DNS update. And you all of a sudden, there are hungry requests, flood of waiting, queued up requests, just hitting that poor new service. And obviously it's gonna go down and and we've seen this many many times when an outage happens right once a service goes up and that immediately goes down because the service cannot handle that potential law that's why what i like about envoy in particular as a proxy is there there's a feature called i talked about envoy guys check it out here envoy is they thought about this they said okay we need to introduce panic mode. Panic mode means if all my backends are suspiciously unhealthy, really, I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to forward the request anyway. If those load balancers continue to request and forward the request to the backend, right, despite this DNS, they at least try then it would have maybe succeeded. It will not have been removed from the backend fleet as a healthy, as an unhealthy service. Right? That's one of the advantages of one feature that can be easily added to all proxies. And I, and I believe all proxies should have this feature. At least disabled by default, give me an option to enable it. Panic mode is really, really powerful. Again, guys, all of this here is a speculation. We don't know the actual root cause analysis. They are still working on it. Again, it's kudos for the sales force team. But that's why it takes time when DNS goes down. Microsoft, we've seen it like a few few weeks back, I think. Microsoft went down because of DNS. And once the DNS is gone, pff, tough luck. Unless you have great resilient software, it's going to really be hard to bring it back up. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me today. I'm going to see you in the next one. Uh, if you like this content, subscribe. I talk about backend stuff. That's what I do. And I'll see you in the next one. Guys, stay awesome. Goodbye.